Today, I want to talk about something that I've never spoken about on my channel, why I repeated a GCSE exam and what I learned from this. Before I start, I want to talk about a free maths resource that is especially useful if you're a GCSE or an A-level student. It's this app called Easy A. If you need help with GCSE or A-level maths, you can use this app to be connected with an expert who will help you. I have actually used the app a few times and I found it really, really helpful. This is not sponsored by the way, I just wanted to mention it because I know we're approaching mock season now. So yeah, click the link in my description box if you want to download the app and I hope it helps. Okay, so let's rewind to when I was a GCSE student. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Radhika and I am an upper sixth student here in Northern Ireland. Our system runs different to English um, exam boards. We can sit GCSE exams in year 10 or as all of you English folk know it, year 11. So I was due to sit 45% of my maths exam in fourth year and then I would sit the remainder in June. Now I sat the paper for the first time in January 2019 and then I repeated the paper in January 2020. So now the big question, why did I repeat this paper? Well to be completely honest, I don't think I worked very hard for this exam and I do take full responsibility for this. I think it was a two hour paper and I didn't get the paper finished and I just remember the weight for the results was so agonizing. I sat the paper in January and results were due to come out in March. So I remember for those two months, every single day that paper was on my mind. I am one of those people that has a tendency to overthink and definitely it created a lot of stress and anxiety for me. Now we approach results day. When I got my results, I found I had scored 169 out of 180. And this corresponded to an A, which was the highest mark that I could achieve in this paper itself. The final mark would then be calculated in June, and that would be um, either an A or an A star. Our system here calls A stars A stars, but I know in England it's a nine. So it works itself out, it's pretty much the same grade. I sat the final paper in June, and when the overall mark was added, I found I got 220 out of 220 in my June exam. So overall, for that year, my GCSE maths exam was 389 out of 400. I want to just say that this is not a bad score. I know that it corresponded to an A, and many people would have been happy with this. I was proud of myself for my performance in June. That year, the mark to get an A star was 397 out of 400, which is nearly 99%. I knew that my June performance was amazing. There was no problem with that, but I couldn't stop thinking that had I worked harder for my January paper and had it gone more smoothly, I could have scored an A star. I also knew that at the time, I hadn't decided on what path I wanted to go down as a career option, but that it was either going to be medicine or engineering. And both of these courses are very competitive. So I thought that if I had an A star in um, a core subject like maths, then it could potentially give me a little bit of an advantage. To be completely honest, I don't know whether that's entirely true, especially considering teacher assessed grades and all of that. That was just the way I thought. I didn't really have many people to guide me and I just really wanted to resit this paper to try and get that chance to bring up my mark. And so I made the decision to repeat my January paper which was 45% of my GCSE mark. So how did I go about repeating this paper? Now, I want to be completely transparent, so I'll break down the way I revised. I revised for one hour a week, starting from September and working my way up till um, December slash January. I think it's extremely important to stress that this required a lot of organization. I was already doing other subjects on top of this, and I was doing further maths GCSE, which is harder and it requires a lot more commitment. And so um, one hour was definitely sufficient per week, but then closer to the exam, I was doing maybe two or three hours a week. And even um, I remember in like the last two weeks, I was doing nearly two or three hours a day. So we fast forward to January, 2020. Now I remember my 16th birthday was during this week 
I had my exam, I think, on Monday, and then I was going to fly to Edinburgh to celebrate my birthday, I think, on Friday. I walked out of that exam knowing I had done well. Sometimes you just have this sixth sense, and I knew it had gone so much better than the first time. To put it into context, I finished this paper one hour before the time was up. I finished the entire paper in one hour, when last time I had done it, I hadn't even got the paper finished in two hours. So this itself was a massive achievement. As well as that, I felt much more confident with the preparation I did. I used Corbett Maths religiously and it definitely helped. And when I got my results in March 2020, literally I think a week before we went into lockdown, I got 400 out of 400 in maths. And this was definitely a massive boost to my confidence because I had made the right decision and I ended up with an A star when I repeated my exam. Also that year the grade boundary was 396 out of 400 so it basically dropped by one mark. So what did I learn? Well in the end it did work itself out but I want to stress that it wasn't a very smooth journey. It required a lot of resilience and hard work and commitment. I had to make sure that I was organized throughout the whole process and um, definitely I used, I would say, better resources. I used Corbett Maths a lot. I've mentioned that in um, a video I made about how I prepared for my GCSE exam. I'll link it below. But as well as that, I'll link below any textbooks that I used. I think when it comes to maths, um, practice is Practice just makes perfect. I made sure that I was practicing a lot of questions. I remember distinctly quadratic equations were like the bane of my life. I could do the um, pure math side of it, but when it came to application, I was horrible. I was so bad at word problems. So I made sure to specifically focus on that. And I just think um, it was a very difficult decision to make, but I made sure that I tried to avoid burnout by staying calm throughout the process. I made the workload manageable for myself. The number one piece of advice I would give to anyone who wants to take the decision to repeat an exam is to think very carefully, look at the subjects that you currently do, see whether you have the time to commit to revising for an exam all over again. At that stage, because you've gone through the experience of sitting an exam, you kind of do have that knowledge. You know what the specification is, you know what you have to learn, and hopefully you should know where to improve on. I am aware that for some exam boards, you can request your paper back. If that's an option, definitely pay the money to do that because it definitely allows you to make like a targeted plan. And lastly, speak to your teacher. I remember speaking to my maths teacher about this and I remember my mom was speaking to some of her friends who are maths teachers about this and definitely getting their opinion on this matter. It really helped in my decision making. If you are planning on repeating an exam, don't stress too much. A lot of people online and people that you know in person, even those in your school, will be repeating exams. It's quite normal, so don't stress too much about it. I personally know so many people who have not only repeated exams, but repeated full years of um, sixth form to try and get those grades. It's completely normal. And yeah, hard work always pays off. Thank you so much for watching this video and hearing my story. Please leave below any comments that you may have or any questions. Please stay safe and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.